Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Surgery and here we are in Physics Surgery Originals where I have brought forward to you a multi-conceptual problem where we'll marry off the band force concept with elastic deformation energy also known as the strain energy. Okay, so uh, this problem requires a complete understanding from the student point of view about band force and also how to uh, apply the concept of strain energy. Okay, so there are quite a few number of misconceptions in both these things. So this problem as a whole ensures that those misconceptions are removed. Okay, so, and also please do stay till the end of the video where I'll be presenting to you uh, four practice problems on the multiple concepts that we'll be dealing with in this particular question. So. I'm very excited. I hope you are too. Okay, so here's the formal wording of the question. In case you want to give an unbiased try, pause the video here, try this one out for four to five minutes and do come back for the concept and also the complete explanation of this problem. Okay, so here we go with the reading of the question. A thin uniform elastic rod of natural length L and area of cross section A, density rho, and Young's modulus y is completely or just completely immersed in a vertical position in fluid of density two rho by applying a vertically downward force F at the top end. The rod is in equilibrium. The elastic deformation energy stored in the rod is, and there are four expressions, and also we are assumed uh, to take the approximation that neglect the lateral strain in the rod, okay, right? and the atmospheric pressure. Longitudinal is this way. So lateral is the strain that is caused from the push of the water on the curvilinear boundary. Okay, so those things you are supposed to neglect and even the atmospheric pressure is being neglected at the top. Okay, so here we go with the concept understanding. So I have divided the concept into two parts, one for the band force understanding and second one for the Hooke's law or the strain energy calculated using Young's modulus. Okay, so here we move. Understanding band force on a rod. So whenever we are given a general case of band force, just watch the left side of your screen. Uh, I'm taking a simple uniform cylindrical rod, which is immersed in a uh, liquid then band force is nothing but in that particular scenario, the pressure difference force that is applied from the top and bottom. Let's say this is F1, which is the pressure at the top P1 multiplied by the area of cross section. And this is F2, which is the pressure at the bottom multiplied by the area of cross section. The difference of these two is nothing but the band force. And the formula of this band force comes out to be uh, the famous one that you study from your ninth and 10th standard, V submerged into rho liquid into G. V submerged into rho liquid into G. This is valid whenever you are having a situation of uniform density of a liquid, fluid of density rho. Okay, so that's the general case. And in this case, the rod was kept on this free surface. So this is the given problem. And also you are requested to assume that the atmospheric pressure is non-existent in this problem for the sake of calculations, okay? So whatever band force that you are going to get is from the thrust from the bottom, okay? So assume the pressure at the bottom of this rod is P, then the pressure force P into A itself to get, uh, totally should be the band force because the top is zero according to the problem. So the value of that force would be V submerged into rho liquid in this problem has been given as two rho into G. But we already know that V submerged is total volume of the rod and V into rho into G is nothing but the Mg of the rod. Therefore, we clearly understand that the value of the pressure force from the bottom surface or the band force in this problem comes out to be twice the weight of the body. And that's why we require another force from the top, which is not shown in this diagram. This is just band force diagram that I've drawn. We'll draw the free body diagram in the next slide. So we need a force in the downward direction in order to ensure that the body stays in equilibrium. How much should be that force? I think by now, some of you would have guessed it. A lot of things on the screen, as I keep saying every time, just follow my lead. Don't read everything on your own. You'll get confused. Okay, so first left side of the screen, just carefully observe. The free body diagram of the rod, I, I peeled the diagram out from that particular picture in the question. So this is the rod alone. Okay, ignore the water. Then the weight of the rod we know is mg. And the band force we have calculated in the previous slide as 2mg. I hope you understand. We call it as upthrust. 
and the applied force therefore you, you can clearly see this 2mg dominates this mg therefore this capital f has to be mg for equilibrium this is the applied force mechanical force some agent someone putting a finger on the top and pressing it down is the value of this capital f okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to pick a small dx element where x is the distance from the top okay i've taken the variable x as the x from the top distance i'll take a small dx part of the rod separate it out here and draw its free body diagram okay so there would be a tension force that would be on the uh, upper side and the another tension force from the lower side trying to compress the rod because of the applied forces okay right so i'll call that as the top value as t and when you travel a distance dx then the calculus should ask you to take the variation in t as dt that's how you write any differential fpd if the function here is t at a distance x then at x plus dx distance the function has to be taken as t plus dt and even this small element that i picked out from here also should be in equilibrium therefore the weight of the rod also should be drawn here so just like the equilibrium of the whole rod even the small part of the rod's equilibrium can be explained by balancing these forces therefore you could clearly see that this t and this t get cancelled this extra dt should balance this lambda dx into g lambda dx is the uh, mass of this dm element lambda is the mass per unit length some of you might question me saying that where is the bind force on this part remember there is no bind force on this small part bind force occurs only because water is surrounding this entire rod when i pick a small part of this out that part that is touching the bottom of the small part and the top of the small part is the rod itself you can't put a bind force on this yes water pushes this particular small part from the sides but that is getting cancelled in this so please don't make the conceptual mistake of putting another bind force on this that tensions are sufficient enough it's the solid solid contact for every dm element okay i hope i could convince you on that therefore the equation that you would write for the equilibrium of small part would be dt is equal to lambda dx into g now since the rod is a uniform rod as mentioned in the question lambda is uniform okay right then you bring dx down and you realize dt by dx is a constant dt by dx is a uniform value when do you have a function dt by dx is lambda g or a uniform value you could say t as a function of x should be a linear function remember straight line equations a uniform slope okay and to find that equation one way of doing it is to integrate this one over 0 to l or 0 to x and get the function or be smart once you realize this is linear or a straight line one any straight line equation in order to form it you just require two boundary conditions and we already have those boundary conditions at our disposal that x is equal to 0 point has the tension of the applied force mg and x is equal to l point at the bottom should have a tension of 2 mg okay and that's why i am able to write the compressive tension profile this tension is not elongative or tensile it is the compressive tension it tries to compress the rod okay so i could draw a graph like this okay so i picked this diagram here i put the rod as it is i'm drawing the axis along the rod this blue color one i am depicting it as a rod and that this is let's say t axis you can nicely and visually draw a graph where the tension at the top of the rod is mg and by the time you reach the bottom the value reaches on the graph paper as 2 mg and connecting these two dots there should be a straight line what should be the equation of this t versus x with the y intercept mg and the slope of m, uh, lambda g i think you should be able to quickly write that as t is equal to mg into 1 plus x by l where if you put x is equal to 0 you'll get mg and x equal to l you should get 2 mg i hope everyone's satisfied with this. this is not the only way of doing things you could integrate this and still realize this answer okay so i just wanted it to be more visual so now you have dealt with the second page of the solution in which tension has been written as function of x okay right what do you do with this tension you try to calculate the stress as a function of x and use the strain energy formula let's move forward so i again lot of things on the board follow my lead so tension on the top here i have picked up from the previous page that i have derived and i am going to do the elastic deformation analysis so this is the dm element again i have drawn for our easy uh, perusal so this is dmg this is t plus dt this is t we know that now let's try to understand the 
elastic deformation analysis who causes the uh, compression on this okay so the role of dt that extra dt that is uh, coming from these two is what it is to balance the dmg dt balances dmg was what we have written in the previous page the role of t these two t's yeah they balance out each other but they also cause the compressive stress so the if someone asks you which of these forces is responsible for the compression of this dx remember dx is the natural length of this element but it gets compressed on that okay so the t and t which are equal and opposite are responsible for compression of dx by a small amount de dx itself is a small amount and it further gets compressed by a small amount de okay therefore what is the definition of strain change in that small length divided by the original length itself is the strain and this strain need not be uniform throughout the rod because the stress is not uniform so the value of stress therefore is not dt by a it is the t by a t is the cost for the stress dt is the cost for the balance of weight please understand this part okay so the value of stress by hooke's law should be y times of this strain if someone asks you what is the relation between these two you should be able to write this and another question you could have been asked what is the complete compression of the rod you could have integrated this de by writing this expression we are not here for that we are here for the calculation of the strain energy okay so each dx therefore can be assumed to be having a uniform value of stress of t by a remember the stress is not uniform throughout the rod but for this small dx length it is okay to assume that the tension is uniform yes you will all uh, say that there is a dt but the dt's stress can be ignored in the comparison to the value of t okay so you can say this is a small rod with a uniform tension of t each to cause the deformation okay so for deformation we consider t and what is the value of the energy stored half stress into strain into the volume of that element which is adx half stress into strain is equivalent to considering this as a spring right remember hooke's law consider this rod as a spring that's why you end up getting this half stress into strain and please the caution is don't use half stress into strain directly for the entire rod okay you should not calculate the total elongation calculate the strain and use this reason half stress into strain formula is only valid whenever the stress or strain is uniform throughout the rod here the rod doesn't have a uniform stress therefore you write it for every dx element the formula and then integrate it t cannot come out of this integral okay right t will be a function and that is why we calculated that function in the previous page so i'll substitute this t here and then happily integrate from 0 to l and then i end up getting the required answer uh, uh, this integration is very simple this is a whole cube divided by 3 and l comes out in the numerator okay so and in the final answer m should be written as rho into a into l and you will end up getting the expression that is a part of the solution okay so i think now we are ready for the practice problem let me mark the answer so the answer you will all agree should be this one okay so that's the first on answer now here's the practice problems so this is the first one which i uh, will be part of our olympiad workout series so i've divided the concepts into buoyant force then elastic uh, uh, deformations and then energy so i've split the concepts okay so first one is on buoyant force this is a slightly difficult question uh, we could consider this at the level 1 of the ioq exam that is going to happen in february so all your uh, ioq aspirants please do Uh, attempt this question and comment the answer below i'll come up with a solution shortly on this uh, there's a cavity ice oil and water and this is going to ice is going to melt and he's going to discuss about the level changes of h1 h2 and h1 plus h2 that is what he is talking about okay the second question is a slightly uh, uh, straight forward one uh, it's at the level of je advance okay it's a passage on elastic energy that i discussed just now instead of t you have a f here so he cautions you that you are supposed to integrate the deformation energy and 16th and 17th are, these are very straight forward for students who have followed the a solution that i have given just now okay so uh, 17th one is about the bulk energy okay bulk modulus and then the next one is also aits select series right so these two aits select series problems i'll come up with the same video solution again bulk strain energy slightly more uh, uh, conceptual compared to the previous uh, problem that i gave okay so try it out it will be a lot of fun for you to understand and solve this one and the last one is the toughest of the four 
Okay, so this will be from the Pathfinder and I'll answer this in the Pathfinder solution series that we have in our channel and properties of matter chapter build your understanding third question okay so this is about again bulk modulus yes i know he calls it as compressibility compressibility is nothing but inverse of bulk modulus so one by beta is the bulk modulus is talking about the variation of pressure with a high h a inph problem was already in 2019 inspired by the first part okay it was that was an easier question only first part was asked so for those I, I, IOQ aspirants the second part would be of much more interest and please do solve it and then we'll come up with the solution of this okay i hope you enjoyed the actual solution and the four practice problems so apart from the originals which the series of which you can check for the link in the playlist description below you have other uh, series that are running parallelly in the channel. So if you are new to this channel, they are uh, Pathfinder Solution Series, Olympiad Workout Series, AITS Select Series, Resolve Series, and many more are there, right? So please do go to the uh, playlist uh, uh, links which are in the description below. Try to take some time to go through the description below, step by step. All the uh, important links are there. Try to follow them. And if you are new, I would request you to watch two or three videos in the order of uploading, right? That means the oldest video first, because there is a running concept in this channel. Each video is connected to another video. So it would be advisable for the new subscribers to actually go through these videos in the order of their uploading. So best way is to go to the video and playlist links uh, or video uh, upload uh, of my tab in the channel and then watch from the first video to the 170, 175 videos. So two or three videos per day. I think if you are a JE aspirant, physics Olympiad aspirant, it will be a lot of fun for you to finish them in next 20, 30 days. Okay. So um, in case you have liked this video, please do like it, share it with relevant WhatsApp, Telegram, whatever groups that you are part of. Uh, try to uh, tell your uh, peers to subscribe to my channel and help me grow my channel and get it a far wider reach if you start watching my videos you'll understand the quality at which the content is made and the rarity of such channels in youtube uh, you should be able to recognize that okay so the more such channels grow it would be better for the students okay so uh, uh, and there was a lot of support and love from uh, the fellow, my subscribers till now so i hope that continues and i'll try to uh, live up to the responsibility of bringing more and more quality content and more frequently also okay so thanks for staying this long and see you in the next video